Please be seated. Proceedings are resumed. The Utility Regulation and Competition Bill 2016, second reading. I recognize the Honorable Minister responsible for works. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I beg to move the second reading of a bill entitled the Utility Regulations and Competition Bill 2016. Moved. Does the Honorable Minister wish to speak to the bill? Yes, Madam Speaker, thank you. Madam Speaker, this bill along with the next three bills on the order paper, I would ask members to treat them together while they are, while they are separate bills. The amendments to the following three bills after this one are all consequential this one and I pray that the House will see it fit to accept them all. Madam Speaker, before I go into the details, let me quickly just say that these four bills are but the first rollout of a series of bills to allow the Office of Utility Regulations and Competition to be opened and to merge the ERA, the ICTA, the Chief Petroleum or the Petroleum Office and the Economic Regulation of the, the economic regulation of the water sector, which is now in the hands of the Water Authority of the Cayman Islands, to bring them all together under the one umbrella, which will be known as the Office of Utility Regulations and Competition. So, what is in this meeting, Madam Speaker, for everyone to be very clear, is the overarching bill, which I am bringing first now, the amendments to the ERA, dangerous substances, and ICTA bills, law, laws rather, which are coming right after this. And when we come back in January, we will then do all of the bills, the amendments to the laws relating to the water sector. That is water production and supply, Water Authority and the waste, wastewater treatment. So with that, Madam Speaker, I just wanted to set the tone so members would understand. And let me also take this opportunity to continue on by saying, while I have seen recent editorials and stories in the compass regarding no consultation, or as they claimed that there was no consultation. Madam Speaker, it's, it's so funny that by coincidence today, and they were speaking about Cayman Water Company, it was so funny that today, while at the chamber luncheon, when I was leaving, I felt a hand touch me on my shoulder, and when I turned around, that was Mr. Rick McTaggart from the Cayman Water Company, who extended his hand and shook my hand and said, Minister, I just want to thank you very much 
for the consultation that your team has had with the Cayman Water Company and that we have aired all of our concerns and they have all been addressed and so we are quite happy to move forward. So I suspect, Madam Speaker, that perhaps it was simply that the editorial board of the Compass just didn't have knowledge of the meetings that were taking place and perhaps in an effort to ensure that they were defending the cause, they thought it best to take that route. So I hope that satisfies you. Madam Speaker, not only that, but I also want to take this opportunity this afternoon to advise all licensees within all of these sectors that whatever legislation is approved now, when we come back in January, because Madam Speaker, the truth is, and I'm coming back to January, but I'm just saying, the truth of the matter is, this is new territory. It is, it is a new entity that is being created. So we understand and accept that it is possible that once the law is in force, that there may be changes that will be required to that law. And also the licensees or those who may hold a franchise or have an agreement will have time between now and then and I have been telling all of them this as I meet with them between now and January that if they encounter anything that is creating any difficulty, certainly we are quite happy to sit, consult with them because it is in everybody's interest. We want the legislation to be the right legislation. We want it to be fair for all of these service providers. And most of all, all of the service providers understand that the government's most important task is to protect the consumers. So once we establish the platforms from which we are working, I do not anticipate any major problems, Madam Speaker. And, and bear in mind now that we're looking at several sectors. We're looking at water sec the, wa the water sector, sewage. We're looking at ICT. We're looking at electricity. We're looking at dangerous substances and fuels. So between now and January, Madam Speaker, we will have all of these pieces of legislation in place, having amended the existing ones to be able to come under the one umbrella piece of legislation which I'm going to speak to now. I hope that sets the tone that members will understand what we wish to accomplish. And Madam Speaker, talking about that, it is critical that especially these service providers understand that there is no real intention to be draconian about any parts of this proposed bill. But at the same time, I want to repeat again, the government has at the fore of the creation of this legislation, the desire, the need, and the will to be able to protect the consumers in the best way possible while allowing these entities to be operating and have the ability to be innovative and to be competitive and to be able to survive fiscally. So there we are. Madam Speaker, this bill seeks to establish an independent, accountable, regulatory body with a view to protecting the rights of consumers, 
encouraging affordable utility services, and promoting competition. The regulatory body will be called the Utility Regulation and Competition Office. And it will have the ability to supervise, monitor, and regulate multiple utility undertakings and markets. The bill contains 17 parts. Part 1 sets out preliminary provisions and is comprised of clauses 1 through 3. And I will go through, Madam Speaker, not necessarily clause by clause, the components of the bill, but I will highlight what I consider to be the most important parts. Hopefully members will have read the bill itself. And also, Madam Speaker, I take this opportunity. I, I, am, I hope that the committee stage amendments for this bill have been distributed. And I would ask members to have a look at those committee stage amendments because those proposed committee stage amendments may well answer some of the queries that some members may have. Those committee stage amendments, Madam Speaker, are as a result of being in consultation with stakeholders and hearing recommendations coming from them. Hopefully, Madam Speaker, that won't take very long. Um, okay. Madam Speaker, just give me one minute, please. Madam Speaker, you, you have to forgive me, and I, I don't Hon want, Honorable I don't Minister, want to cause any, any consternation. I could beg your indulgence if sure. I would just um, ask you to kindly take your seat, nothing that you've done, and if members would just give me about two minutes, and if the acting deputy governor could meet me in my chamber of learning with the clerk, I'll be back in, in five minutes.